Okay, so welcome to this video. I want to take you through the the S4 HANA SD sales contract management process. It's best practice I9I that I want to talk through. So firstly, we'll be looking at why do we have SD quantity contracts? What's the purpose? We will look at the process in Fiori and some of the apps that you can use to to run through your process, and then some of the the configuration items that you can work on. Um, to make the process work. So firstly, if you look at the apps that we want to work with, firstly is this uh, sales contract fulfillment rates app, then this manage the sales contracts uh, app, manage sales orders, create billing documents, and then we look at the list of incomplete sales contracts. So let's start off. Um, I want to take you through this app firstly this one helps you to monitor uh, the status of your contracts, which helps a lot to see what you've released in terms of your, there's your sales contract number, the sales org sold to party. There's the, the contract target value. Uh, most of these are quantity contracts. So you'll have, the, you'll have the target value, you have the contract fulfillment rate in terms of the value um, then it will help you to see what percentage you have actually released then also the elapsed time of your contract um, so you have a start and a finish date a validity period for your contract so this is also being measured and then what's the amount that's been released with call of with call of orders right that's the first one then moving on to the manage the sales contracts what we have here is then this app that will help you to look at your contracts in a dynamic way if you select your contract number you can add some links here if you want to and these apps will then appear so firstly you'll go into let's say display contract to to look at your what's been set up there's the this quantity contract number the customer and your product so today we want to look at a service uh, contract specifically you'll see that there's the service and supply and install service and the item category is TAD that we're looking at for the service and there's a quantity of 100 that I, that I set up um, there's the net value of the of the of the contract and let's let's go through the process a bit more to see what's what's coming next now um if you go back to this uh, this app here you will see that we have consumed on this contract number 453 we've released 40 percent of our contract now we want to release a create a call of order for the rest for the balance of this contract uh, remember, I'm taking you through the process first and then we look at the configuration that will help you to, to set this up. So we go to, to manage sales orders. This app also gives you a list of your sales orders. You can use these filter criteria um, to, to analyze your sales orders. Now, I want to create a, a sales order. Um, it's, a, it's a zero R that I want to create. Right, so we select ZOR and I want to create with a reference. So you select your contract tab. We're looking at contract number 53. So here's our contract numbers. Let's sort here. We select contract number 53. Now, if you select item selection it will give you a list of the items on that contract with the open balance or the remaining balance so we had a contract and the open quantity is 60. you also have the option here to do a selection if you have more than one item you can select and deselect items and update the quantities based on what you want to create your sales order um, so this these will then be copied over to your sales order so in this case we're selecting this item, we're leaving it 60, let's change it to 50, let's change it to 50, and we copy. Now this will be copied over to your sales order, there you'll see there's the material number, the quantity, 
and all the rest of the details is copied over from the sales order. Now I want to save. Uh, firstly, we need a customer reference number. We will make this customer reference number A, B, C, one, two, three. All right, and it's saved. Let's go back to our Manage Contract Fulfillment Rates app. Now I want to run this app again to show you uh, what happened to our contract here, number 53 you will see that 90% has been fulfilled in terms of, of value. Right. Um, you can also add the released value fields here. And you'll see there's the specific amount in US dollar that's been released. And still again, the time, the time period is still on 0%. Right. Now let's create a billing document. Um, select the billing from this date, billing type F2, sales org 1710, I think. We have to select order related billing, let's display. So there's our order, one to one double five, and we create a individual billing document and we save right so then that's that's the billing document it's been created successfully lastly i want to show you the, the list of incomplete sales contracts if you run it again you can filter and play with these fields there you've got your contract numbers there's your document type these are quantity contracts there's a value contract and here it's the incompletion is in the general delivery and billing sections and in this case it's just in the billing section so if you click on it it will tell you what's missing the customer reference number is missing so you can actually double click fix it and it will disappear from this list quite useful to monitor incomplete sales contracts so that's it from the contract side here you can monitor your values you can dive into your sales contracts and analyze them with this app. Here you create your, your sales orders with reference to your contract, your billing documents, and then you create, you can look at your incomplete sales contracts in this area here. Okay, so now I wanna show you the, the configuration. A few bits and pieces on the config side that I think is, is worth looking at. Uh, firstly, I want to go to Firstly, I want to go to transaction V0, V8 to look at the document type. We use document type CQ. I use the standard document type for quantity contracts. Nothing special here that you really have to look at. The standard config applies, the document category is G, your number ranges, your sets up here, out of the box. So nothing fancy was used here. Um, you can use it as is. You can copy this document type and create a new one, should you wish to do that. But in this case, I just use the standard one to make it work. Now, if you go down to, I want to take you to transaction V0, V7. To look at the item category, we use TAD, which is the one for services, the service item category. If you go into the details, um, firstly, what's important here is the completion rule. Now, if you go back to our, to our apps, you will see this app the sales contract fulfillment rates app actually runs on or is actually you have to select a completion rule to for your um, contracts to appear in this app so in this case i selected c the item is completed after the target quantity is fully referenced that's very important if this entry is blank 
your contract will not appear in this, the fulfillment right app. Very important. So what is the completion rule? Um, this field actually determines whether the, the, the sales contract is complete or not uh, and whether or not the quantity is, is fully used um, and referenced in your sales orders. So that's the, the purpose of the completion rule. So take note, we'll change this to a C. Um, the recommendation might be not to use the standard item category, create a, a custom one, a, a Z item category that you can use and update the completion rule there. Then billing relevance, also important. Uh, we need a B here that says it's order related billing for, for this item category, that's quite standard. And then in terms of pricing, we need an X here, which is standard pricing, also very important. Um, the other selections here are not that important at this stage. Um, these ones that I mentioned, if you work on those, they, they will make your process work. Right. So let's display. Um, I want to take you through the material that we used. If you go to our contract. I just want to show you the the settings on the on the material. We used material number two two seven four. Item category item category tad was determined, like what we have here. Yeah, very important. So now, how did we get to that point? Let me show you. Let's display the material. I'm just going to go to MM03-2274. We select the basics view, basic data 1 and 2, sales org 1, 2. Um, we actually just need sales org 2. Um, but you can select the other ones and then you just enter your plant sales org distribution channel. And we go to sales org 2. Here you'll see um, you can ignore this item category group for now you will see the item category group on this side is ZEIS or ZEIS so there's a bit of configuration you need you need there to to make this process work so for now I'm gonna move this one over and then we're gonna go to V0V4 and we're going to search for our document type. So here you actually have to link your item category group, Zeiss, to your, to your document type. So here we have it. This is the bit of config that's needed. There's our document type. There's our item category group. And then there's the default. The tag that was picked up by um, the sales order. Right. Then lastly, um, so this is important, you have to do this config. Then lastly, I want to show you the configuration of item category, the copy control of, of, of um, the contract to the sales order for TAD. That's very important. So we go to VTAA, that's the copy control section, and we scroll down and we look for CQ, we copied CQ to we copied CQ to, to ZOR. Just gonna look for it quickly. So here's the one where we said our source document was CQ and our target was the sales order ZOR. So we select item category, we go to we know we're working with that a service item, and if you drill down here. Yeah, there's a few more settings that you need to make this process work in copy control. Firstly, you have to select update document flow. Um, that's important to X to create the document flow records. And then secondly, you have to select a, a plus here in the positive negative quantity section. This will help the system to determine how to 
determine the quantities when you create your sales order from your contract. In the copy quantity, you will see we're selecting the blank option, a very important. The blank option tells us to, tells SAP to automatically determine the quantities. In other words, um, this will then determine what, what quantity is open on your contract and then it will copy that to the item selection when you do the sales order. You can select A and B if you want to copy the order quantity or the target quantity, but in this case the quantities will be dynamically updated when you create your sales order. Then also the pricing type is D that we're just using to copy the, the price elements unchanged. So these are the copy control items between our source and target documents for item category TAD to, to make the copy between the contract and sales order work. So I forgot to cover this. So what's the benefits of why do we have the, these contracts in SD? Firstly, um, it will benefit the buy, buying and selling companies, um, both the, the buyer and seller. Um, it, it actually establishes a, a long-term business relationship there's a commitment from both parties to the, there's, a, there's a, a loyalty from the customer that you have a binding contract where you say, I, will, I have this, this demand from you. There's a guaranteed demand from the customer. And then also um, your prices and discounts are locked in for the term of the contract. So it's, it's a nice way to manage your, your long-term relationship with the customer and that all parties concerned knows there, there is a, an agreement in place to make this work. So thanks for watching my video. Please like and subscribe for more good content about S4HANA and the Intelligent Enterprise.